Welcome to another episode of Coffee and Whiskey with Ivy. In case you're wondering what I'm doing with this bamboo pole, I have completed 70 years of my life. On my 71st year, I need a weapon of mass protection. And so, pimps and parasites and your prostitutes, watch out. Top of the news for many days, many days, many days. I'm very happy that Minister Heng Sui Kiat will become the Deputy Prime Minister this week. And I'm happy to know that he will most probably become the Prime Minister. From all that I have read, I like what he's saying. He seems to be an honest person. He seems to be a gentle person and he seems to be a kind person and I'm sure he will do his best. I can only hope when he becomes Prime Minister that he will be supported by a group of ministers who really know their job well and to know their job well means they can be paid a good salary but they know that particular ministry very well and have been there long enough to understand the real issues and find the solutions. They do not have to have so many portfolios to justify the high salaries they're earning and then doing a bad job about everything. I can only give him advice that he should listen to what the ground is telling him, especially this article written by Chua Mui Hong, although it's about the NUS case, but her closing paragraph is very, very important. It says that, can leaders actually look at the expectations of a new generation? The pioneer generation like me, we built the nation, the, gen the Merdeka generation improved it. Those born in the 60s, they're going to call them the Majula generation, as she suggested, uh, are just the custodians. But the millennials is the generation which will decide the future of this country. So, Minister, I wish you good luck. I'm rooting for you. Do listen to a broad section of people. But make sure these people are genuine and thinking of the good of the country and not a pimp or a parasite or a prostitute who is trying to enrich themselves only. The Prime Minister said legislation is essential to curbing of fake news. And he is totally right. But people are worried because they think, who will check the government? So for those of you who are worried about who is going to check whom, Read Han Fook Kwan's article on truth, falsehood and power, who decides. It's very clear. This paragraph says, It has also given the assurance that the law is concerned only about facts which are either true or false, not with opinion or comment. So if I say the Prime Minister or the Minister is a donkey, it is an opinion, right? And they cannot arrest me or harass me. So don't worry. Huh? The rule on fake news is only frightening to those who have evil intentions towards our people and towards our country. Don't worry. If you have a worry, talk to me. 68 million fund to turn labs into food factories of the future. I like this because food matters to me and food matters to most people in the world. But let's make sure it is used correctly. You know, the people who know what makes plants grow and what people eat in Singapore, especially green vegetables, are the Chinese farmers. All they need is sand, sunshine, shit and water. Okay? And they produce vegetables that sell at minimum $2, $3 and everybody in Singapore can afford it. Those sky rice uh, production farms in Singapore now are growing things like strawberries selling at $20, it's growing sp sprouts and supplying to restaurants where the main cost is like $68. Okay, now what is important is for us to read this. 
How is China able to provide enough food to feed its population of over 1 billion people? Do they import food or are they self-sustainable? If this is not fake news, then you'll be surprised to know that China produces most of the honey in the world, most of the tomatoes in the world, and many other products in the world because the Chinese government has made it a point to really understand agriculture. Seriously, take a look at a sky rise development which we had and tell me, what are they producing now? I believe 18 million was invested in that company. Coming to this story, posting my story on Instagram was last resort. Why did she have to resort to this? What were her parents doing? Were the parents powerless? What were the NUS authorities doing? Are they useless? And what about the police? Couldn't the previous people have gone to the police and the police do something serious about it? Now, coming to this young man, I like him because He's honest. He says, no excuse. It was very wrong. I like that. If you make a mistake, admit it. This is the first step towards saving him. Right? We should give him a chance. And my advice to him is, if he got something wrong here, one screw is loose, come and see me and I'll tighten his screws for him. So he will never have a problem with screws. As this topic is so popular in the newspapers and online, our poll this week is based on this topic. Is punishment the only answer or should we suggest counselling? A. He should be punished. B. He should be counselled. Or C. What do you suggest? Go to the link and give us your answer, please. To last week's poll. The question was, do you want rainwater to be harvested in your estate? 12.5% said no. 12.5% said not yet. But 75% said yes. Three cheers to the 75%. You see, you will think that these people are evil for putting so many workers in an illegal dump. But as an employer and one who has even run construction sites, let me tell you something. These people are doing what they're doing because they're desperate. You know, the cost of doing business in Singapore is ridiculous. The government should look seriously at why this is happening, right? Costs are so expensive that these people have to cut corners all the time. Perhaps the government is not interested in these small SMEs and these medium SMEs, they want them all to close down. But remember, they also employ a lot of Singaporeans. And if we close them down, what will these people do? Go and become grab drivers. So, the Ministry of Manpower should ask itself, do they really want to help these people? Or do they want to have as many workers, foreign ones especially, so that they can generate a lot of money? for that ministry. Hmm? I was so looking forward to reading this article, Why the Statutory Requirement Age is Important for Singapore Workers. By the time I came to the last paragraph, I feel like strangling this person who wrote this. Mr. Heng Chi Hao, let me ask you something. Please ask yourself, why people are working longer in Singapore? It's not because we are smarter than the white countries where the rate of old people working is very low. It is because our people do not have enough money to retire on. So don't make it look like we are so clever. Huh? Number two, union leaders should think of how to make sure the workers earn a decent living wage, not pay themselves millions and talk about a progressive wage model for the rats below them. Please search your conscience and don't write crap like that. This is a nice, heartwarming story. John Ching, this handsome boy, 
who's taken over his family business because when asked what advice would he give to those who are going to join the family business, he says, Join the family business with an open heart, find your passion and persevere. But the most important sentence is, the last is especially important in a family business where you are expected to work harder than your employees. Know that you're not alone because there are others out there who are in the same boat. I like to read about a young person who understands hard work. Keep up the good work, John Cheng. All the best to you. I really love this article about fighting spiders and the Spider-Man. And especially this Mr. Zach Lim. He recalls catching spiders with his mother as a 10-year-old. And today he's 31 years old. His mother is 50 and they're still catching spiders together. I think that's brilliant. And he says this, This hobby has kept him away from late nights and drinking because their group actually gets up very early in the morning to go spider hunting. And he thinks that parents should consider this hobby and bring all their kids out to catch spiders because the kids will become close to nature and not be stuck on the handphone all the time. You know, Mr. Zach Lim, I really think you're sweet and you really gave good advice. Please come to Bollywood Veggies. I will catch spiders with you and give you a free coffee and not a whiskey because it's in the morning. Talking about fighting spiders, please watch a series on Toggle called Fighting Spiders. It's a brilliant show about three kids catching spiders. Thank you to those of you who have sent me these questions. My mom always forced me to eat veggies. Why should I eat veggies? Why should you eat veggies? If you don't want to shit and you want to be totally constipated, then don't eat veggies. It's okay. They will just have to pump it out of you. I want to look as good as you when I'm 70. Share me your secrets. Very simple. I used to smoke when I was young. I used to bring, drink one bottle of whiskey a day after I'm 60. And then the doctor tells me I'm overweight, but these are 5 kilos each, okay? So I'm allowed 10 kilos extra. So what is the secret? I move all the time like a shark. I don't exercise. I just keep moving. Even when I'm watching TV, I'm shaking my arms and moving. I only lie down when I'm totally exhausted and then I sleep soundly for 8 to 10 hours and then I'm up again. I eat when I'm hungry. I drink when I'm thirsty. I have no stress because I pass it on to everybody else. Thank you for watching Coffee and Whiskey again this week. You know, you live and learn something. I thought I knew everything about grass, but my team tells me this is the saw grass. You know, you do this, it's like, ow, it sticks to you.